in order to make sure that all the requirements which have been spelled out for Ethernet based uh, NGN quality of service provisioning, a reference architecture has to be considered. This reference architecture shall form the basis for, for us to consider all the functional requirements and the network elements which would be then required to implement these. So for that, in this module, we are going to look at the uh, Ethernet connection as an end-to-end -end process and uh, the boundaries between the access and the core side have to be addressed because that is where the QS mechanisms have to be particularly monitored and ensured. Then the, we are going to look at these interfaces and then we are going to look at the um, Ethernet based uh, virtual connections which are uh, carrying the user traffic between two endpoints. So once we say that we have uh, Ethernet as a service, it is actually an end-to-end -end service which spans across multiple network and uh, operators and service providers. So you can think about a concatenation of these operators and providers. Uh, now, since they each have different scopes, the access side, the core side, so we have to define some kind of interfaces. So Ethernet defines certain interfaces in the form of the user to network interface and the network to network interface. Now, these interfaces have their own scopes with regards to the functionality they are supposed to provide. Naturally, when we talk about the access side, so the operation, administration and maintenance uh, and the virtual private network service provisioning are not inherent to the UNI side. Likewise, uh, the network to network interface is more concerned about uh, uh, encapsulated traffic, which is handled by the routers. But in this case, since we are talking about Ethernet, so we have switches all across. So it means that uh, the uh, VLAN tags, such as provided in 802.1Q uh, standard, have to be understood and incorporated at the network to network side as well. And then the uh, user to network interface uh, frame that leaves the customer premises the access side enters into the core side has to has now uh, it had to be incorporated as payload in the link layer uh, frame at, uh, at the network to network interface. Uh, let's look at the reference architecture in a little more detail. We already know that we have the service stratum and the relevant entity with regards to the quality of service is the service control function. Here, for the sake of simplicity, we have two distinct SCFs A and B, basically managing the QoS aspects for the network A and network B. Here, the point of concern is that we have the Ethernet at the transport stratum. So we have the customer premises equipment, which speaks Ethernet-based uh, IEEE 802.3 protocol. So we have between the customer premises equipment and the core, the access network side, we have the user to network interface. And then from the one network or one service provider on one network operator to another, we have the network to network interface. And then on the last mile, that is on the other side of the connection, we have another user to network interface between the penultimate transport network, B in this case, and the customer premises equipment. So we are now looking at the network interfaces both on the user side and between these networks. Now the Ethernet virtual connections are basically the, uh, the way to go or the mechanism for a carrier Ethernet uh, 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 provisioning. That is when a carrier Ethernet is talking to an access side Ethernet network, uh, then Ethernet virtual connections have to be established. Uh, these virtual connections transcend or go beyond the user to network interface. These are actually established between two end-to-end -end, uh, UNIs. Um, we've already discussed it and we know that the service types which can be provided by these uh, virtual connections can be the E-Line, uh, E-LAN and E-Tree. Different uh, formations or different uh, uh, connectivity or topological ways through which these services can be offered. Now we know that the uh, tagging done for 
uh, virtual LAN, uh, as in 802.1Q, uh, uh, has QS support using three priority bits. So uh, we steal three priority bits from the uh, from uh, from from the tag, and we use it for up to eight different quality of service uh, classes. So we can say that eight different uh, QS mechanisms, uh, QS differentiations can be uh, provided for certain QS mechanisms. Uh, depending upon uh, the uh, total uh, combinations. Uh, between uh, the bandwidth profiling that is done on the basis of MAC addresses or IP addresses or even the flows at the transport layer. The bandwidth profile is the categorization of uh, traffic falling into certain bandwidth, bandwidth requirements. This is one aspect of QS provisioning. Then we have the uh, class of service that we've already seen. So if you combine the bandwidth profile and the class of service, four possible combinations can exist. For instance, uh, it can be one to many, um, many to one, or many to many. Let's look at these. So we can have a single class of service uh, based uh, virtual connections with one bandwidth profile. It means we are looking at multiple flows, each having its own uh, um, bandwidth profile which is the same as others so we, we don't have a problem we have one bandwidth profile that is only a single bandwidth profile and we have single class of service in this case all the frames belonging to uh, a single class of service with single bandwidth profile would be treated exactly in the same way in terms of uh, how these uh, uh, packets are scheduled and in the wake of some uh, competition or network congestion how the traffic is shaped. Then we have the second type where we have single uh, class of service and we have multiple bandwidth profiles. In that case, uh, definitely the class of service uh, based uh, traffic behavior as in scheduling and traffic shaping is going to be consistent for all the flows. But since each have its own bandwidth profile, so the uh, the quality of service aspect based on uh, bandwidth allotment is going to vary. Then we have multiple class of service uh, virtual uh, connections for a single bandwidth profile. It is self-explanatory where we are going to have multiple class of service flows, but the bandwidth requirements for all these are the same. And the most complex one is once we have multiple class of service uh, based virtual connections, each having its uh, own specific uh, and different bandwidth profile. So uh, these virtual connections would each dictate different resource availabilities and this is going to determine a changing behavior and different requirements for the RSCF. Let's talk a little more on the concept of interfacing and how these interfaces uh, are implemented. Um, a single UNI and a single NNI, both can support uh, more than one uh, virtual connections because each virtual connection actually refers to a unique socket or a unique process between two endpoints. Um, another important aspect here is that the VPNs, which are enabled uh, between, uh, uh, between NNIs, are actually uh, the transport mechanisms for IP packets between uh, distinct parties. So it means that uh, some kind of uh, translation mechanism is also needed to, uh, to map the VPNs from the NNI to the UNI. Uh, then another important and interesting dimension emerges because since we are talking about all switching uh, paradigm and if the uh, uh, switched network, which is the Ethernet on the access side and as well as on the carrier grid is now integrated or dovetailed with MPLS enabled networks, then uh, the VLAN IDs are not needed because uh, MPLS works on the basis of uh, the, uh, the labels. So it means some kind of mechanism has to be uh, provisioned which translates the VLAN IDs into um, MPLS understandable labels. Uh, and, uh, and likewise, once we are talking about all switched, network, uh, switched environment, uh, uh, up 
within a large LAN, we were using the spanning tree protocol uh, to converge the uh, switched network and to uh, to to avoid any uh, loops there. But um, once uh, we are talking about uh, uh, quality of service, then spanning tree can be replaced with the QoS based uh, routing uh, protocols. So we are talking about uh, switching mechanisms, all switching uh, paradigm, but uh, it is a QoS enabled uh, switching elevated to routing because switching is done within a single um, uh, IP domain or IP subnet. But when we are talking about uh, the scope which is enlarged, so the IP addresses uh, may not be changing, but since we are talking about interfacing the access side as well as the core side, so some kind of routing, route, routing kind of mechanism has to be implemented which supports QS. Mm -hmm.